Hey everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day, and today I'll be reviewing Somewhere Only We Know by Marine Goo. Marine Goo also wrote I Believe in a Thing Called Love, and why is my brain not working? Oh boy. <laughs> Somewhere Only We Know, that's this one. The Way You Make Me Feel. <laughs> and I've reviewed both of those books on this channel, so I'll leave the links to those reviews down in the pants. But yeah, this is Marine Goo's newest book. It's another YA contemporary with a Korean-American lead. Those are two of my favorite things, so of course I was gonna read this book. But yeah, this is a story about a girl named Lucky. Britney Spears plays in the background. This is a story about a girl named Lucky. But yeah, no, it is about a girl named Lucky. She's a huge K-pop star, and she is just finishing up her Asia tour, and her last stop is in Hong Kong. And then she has a couple of days off before she goes to America to make her American debut on a late night talk show. The stakes are really high for her. She's at the top of her game, and this American debut can kind of make or break her career. But during the days between the end of her Asia tour and the start of her American debut, she decides to be a little rebellious, and she sneaks out of her hotel room. And when she sneaks out, she meets this boy named Jack. Jack is also Korean, living in Hong Kong. He's in his gap year before he goes to college because he doesn't quite know what he wants to do yet. But as a side hustle to make money, he takes pictures kind of as a paparazzo of celebrities and he submits them to tabloids. So as you might guess, Lucky and Jack meet each other during those days that she's still in Hong Kong. And Jack kind of takes her on this whirlwind adventure across Hong Kong. And Lucky is so excited to be experiencing the world as a normal human for the first time in a really, really long time. And Jack has his ulterior motive where he likes to hang out with her and he's kind of pretending to be her guide around the city, but he's also taking pictures of her while she's not paying attention and getting information out of her so that he can sell these photos and this story to a tabloid. So that's our premise. If you've read Marine Goo before, you know she writes such fun books. They're just such a good time. I will say that I think my favorite is still I Believe in a Thing Called Love, which was the very first book that I read from her. But something that works really, really well, I think, is the chemistry between Lucky and Jack. Lots of good vibes there, lots of good tension. It works really well. I will say that I am someone who gets very, very frustrated with these short time frame romances because it's like, realistically, they're spending like, what, max 48 hours together? It's just like, I don't know, call me cynical, call me bitter, whatever. But when you have two kids who, who know each other for literally like two days and they're like, I love you. <laughs> I'm just like, hello? There are just so many things that matter that they don't know about each other, that you don't know about a person within two days, you know? Like what's their voting record? Do they care about the environment? How do they treat their mother? Like whatever, this is a young adult fiction book, so let them fall in love in 48 hours, sure. But it's like, it's exactly the thing that I can't get over when it comes to Nicola Yoon's books. Is that like, I'm okay with people liking each other within like 24 hours or 48 hours, but like insta-love, I love this person. I'm gonna move across the ocean for this person. Like, what? What are you doing? But anyway, that's just a bit of a tangent. That's personal taste. I really need a slow burn. And there was a lot of burn in this book, not so much slow. I think another one of my big gripes about this book is that the plot kind of doesn't exist, where Lucky's just kind of let loose in Hong Kong, and we know that a bunch of people are looking for her because she has such high status, a bunch of security guards, like she's her company's biggest asset, but like we never really feel any of that pressure of the security guards looking for her until like the very end when they come into the story. So the huge middle section of the book, the fun and game section of a story, is just them like prancing around Hong Kong and eating a ton of food, and by the way, Hong Kong is is like very high on my bucket list of places I want to visit. And this book did nothing but make that desire to go there so much stronger. But yeah, the middle section kind of drags. It's really just them exploring the city and eating a bunch of food and going around as tourists. And it's fun. And I think it would translate so well to visual media. But as a book, I'm kind of like, okay, when is the plot going to kick in? I just think the concept of this book is really interesting. K-pop is something that kind of like goes in and out of my life. I was really, really into it in elementary school slash maybe early middle school and then completely dropped it going into high school. And then over the past two months, I've really become such trash for Blackpink. So I do know some things about K-pop, but I don't know a ton. So to see a main character who's a K-pop star was really, really interesting because you know that they suffer so much. They are under such tight restrictions. They're like completely regulated in what they're allowed to eat, who they're allowed to be friends with, like where they spend their time, things like that. It's pretty interesting to see Lucky's perspective on it. And I think what's interesting is that she's really, really passionate about music and what music can do for people. And I think that's very valid. 
But one of the biggest issues I think people have about K-pop stars is that they don't really write their own music most of the time. They usually have producers that are attached to specific groups that write all their songs for them. And so it's very hard to say that you're really passionate about music if you're only doing one part of the process. I feel like singer-songwriters are the people who are seen as most authentic musicians because they write their songs and they perform them. But when you're performing someone else's words, I feel like it often lessens your credibility as an artist. So reading about Lucky you'd be so passionate about music and sharing that music with other people and the experience that connects everyone. I think it's great. I think it's a really nice sentiment. But I also think it's kind of incongruous with what we think of when we think of K-pop. But anyway, that's just me. This is really turning into a huge tangent, but I guess it's also not that big of a deal because I remember when Demi Lovato released Skyscraper, people were like, oh my god, this song is everything, her strength is incredible, and she didn't even write that song. And the fact that she didn't write that song, I don't know if it makes it less powerful of an anthem for her. I don't know. I don't know. There are tons of artists who don't write their songs. Like a lot of Ariana's early music she didn't write. Rihanna, people still love her. I'm obviously just very biased towards artists who write their own songs. So I think Lucky and Jack work really well and I think they have really great chemistry together, but I could not get over the fact that on Lucky's side, this relationship and friendship is just built on pure admiration and trust and enjoyment of the other person's company, whereas on Jack's side, it's deception. It's lying. Like this is the crux of the story of the plot is that Jack is exploiting Lucky and then along the way they like fall in love. I guess Lucky's also lying because she's trying to not let Jack know that she's a K-pop star because she's like in disguise. But that's like a very different type of lying than using the other person for financial gain. These are just thoughts. I thought Summer Only We Know is fun. I of course love seeing Korean American representation. I will never get tired of it. I do think that it's a very idealized image of a Korean American household where things like mental illness are very much glossed over and they don't really delve into the stigma that exists on mental illness. On Jack's side, telling your family that you want to pursue something artsy and not so much something that's financially stable. I think that's also very idealized. But yeah, overall, I think this book is fun. I don't think it's incredible. I think sometimes the dialogue gets very cringy, but for the most part, it's really fun. I love the setting of Hong Kong. I think our two leads are really strong as characters, really strong as narrators. They each have a good amount of depth to them. I think it's a fun love story, although it still like grinds my gears a little bit that it's a love story that takes place in like 48 hours. But yeah, I support Maureen Gu. I love Korean American authors who write about Korean American women. We really love to see it. I do wish that some issues were dived deeper into, like the hypersexualization of really young girls in K-pop, or the fact that they are so restricted in what they're allowed to eat, and they often have like unhealthy bodies by American standards, or Lucky's issues with anxiety, or the idea of not wanting to pursue your parents' path for you in terms of Jack's storyline. Like there are so many things that have the potential to really say something significant here and I feel like all of the issues are just kind of briefly touched upon so there's a part of me that does wish that it was less fluff more significance but the fluff itself is still really really fun but yeah overall enjoyed the read it was fun Marine Goose books are always really fun if you haven't checked out I believe in a thing called love would really really recommend that one the way you make me feel is also really fun and there's like a really really tiny small cameo of the way you make me feel in this book somewhere only we know at the very end just kind of like an easter egg for people who've read her other books but yeah I think that's all I have to say about this book if you've read this one let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll have a fantastic day and happy reading. Bye.